Hi everybody, I'm Justin Boost and I'm here to show you the Starry Night Brush Pack for Particle Shop in Photoshop. Uh, all 15 brushes are right here, they are listed and you can read them as I'm going throughout the video and what I'm going to do is start from top to bottom on this brush pack and go through each brush and show you uh, an example of what it does so you know what you're getting yourself into. I'm going to start by color picking kind of the main part of the canvas here and we can adjust on the color wheel here. I'm going to go ahead and start with Asteroid. This is a pretty fun brush. You can up and down the count or really how strong it is. What you're going to do is pick just a slightly different brush and and we're going to make a good size here and this is going to make some really cool, oh, let's turn my opacity up, maybe not quite all the way up, some really cool little tails for little asteroids you can create. If you want just one, two, or lots of them you can see I can make it as big as I want or as small as I want. Uh, I would say it would probably be most realistic to make sure they go in the same direction if you do a lot of them. Uh, but then what you can do is you can go and you can take your airbrush and you can kind of back out of these to make them transparent again. If, if they were a nice brush stroke but they came in too strong and you want it to look natural, um, <clears throat> go ahead and back out with this eraser over here. All right. So that applies to a lot of the brushes you'll be seeing. So let's go ahead and look at Cosmos here. This one actually creates a pretty fun effect. This one is going to give your space a little kind of a color variation. You can change it up. Um, so, you know, this is kind of a little boring down here, and I just kind of want to spice up the color. And it's kind of like a web of some nice, beautiful cosmic texture there that's going to help you kind of express that part of your picture more. We've got Halo here. Uh, this one I definitely recommend using with the eraser. You're going to take it from one end of the page to the other. Um, I, I recommend that at least. You can do it like this, but you know, unless you have some kind of planet or something, uh, it's just a really cool um, halo effect you can, you can take and then take the eraser and again back out. Whoops back out to keep your foreground intact all right uh, so let's go ahead and kind of erase what I've got going on here so I don't lose too much canvas too quickly we've got haze here this is a pretty fun one it's definitely got some color variation there and you can add this to kind of create some interesting lighting towards the bottom of your canvas and again you know with starry nights you definitely want a foreground in there so you're gonna want to do these effects and then back out of it with the eraser you can get pretty precise with this eraser. Go ahead and zoom in as you need. And um, you can kind of keep the foreground elements in there. So let's go ahead and go to Infinity. This is probably one of my favorite brushes uh, ever introduced in one of these things. So this one I'm really excited about because it, well, how do you describe that? That just is awesome. Now one thing with this brush is I definitely recommend playing with the opacity because the farther out in the sky as you can see from those little stars the lower the opacity you are going to want so maybe way far out there I'll do something like that a little closer I'll do something a little stronger maybe we need to be less saturated uh, if you're to do something really saturated with full opacity and a high count of these then you're going to get something that looks cool but really unrealistic in comparison with this subtle difference here. Uh, so just watch out for that as you're um, playing with this absolutely beautiful brush. Uh, the longer you hold it, the longer it goes. So you can keep it there and back out of the bright spots if it's too bright for your uh, picture there, if you didn't pick a good enough opacity. Uh, so you can save your beauty there. Um, let's go ahead and look at Magic. And this brush it's kind of like the halo brush, but it's got a little bit of a stagger to it. So if you get it out the right size, we can put some bolts through the sky. And this will create a really cool tail of some magic brushes. I'm going to go ahead and grab my eraser and back out of that. So you can kind of see what that looks like as you blend it into your sky. It can create some really cool cosmic effects up there. So I'm actually going to go ahead and reset this canvas because I've just got too much going on. Let's see here, it's gonna. There we go. <clears throat> now let's go to Nova here. This one is really fun. If uh, if you just don't have enough interesting things happening up here, we can pick a, a hue and saturation, and we're gonna add some little 
maybe we need to be more saturated for this brush. Add some little cosmic novas to the sky. And I definitely recommend doing it in parts with a foreground and then backing out. It just creates a really cool effect. Let's look up here. Oh, that's why I've got a soft eraser. I like the eraser I can just be straight up with. Back out of that. Let's back out of this one carefully. And again, you can get really detailed with that if you get down in there. And then when you get back in Photoshop, you can blend things up, use a blender and painter. There we go. We've got some nice little novas going on down there. Now, pinhole kind of goes hand in hand in star, so I'm going to do these back to back together. The pinhole is going to be more for that star that's just got, it's just like a little pinhole in the sky, just a little concentrated. And the longer you hold it, the longer it will stay there. But you don't really have to. It's still going to come down to that pinhole. It will go farther out. You can see it. if we had a more clear sky, maybe you could see more of that. But you can make it more saturated, more obvious. And the difference between that one and star, I want to show you side by side, is not much but a pretty, pretty fantastic difference. They both do the same thing. So if we weren't comparing them side by side, you might think, well, what's the difference between pinhole and star? Well, as you can see, these star is much more up close and personal. Uh, I would kind of play with the um, temperature or saturation of this one. Uh, I would, you know, use discretion because this is a pretty bold statement we're making when we put one of these down. There we go, and you can do a big one too. Um, Again, play with the opacity, maybe even the count on that. You can turn the count down. You're going to have less of them. Pretty cool. Almost like a cosmic firework going on there. And then we've got Tracer. This is a pretty cool effect. It's similar to our... Which one was it? It's similar to our Halo brush here. Um, but the Tracer is going to be one line here. And so you can kind of go use these brushes hand in hand too and you know play with the the saturation of it. It does change color and keep a cosmic feel as you're painting these strokes. You can kind of get lost a little better that way. Um, so that again is a really cool effect. Uh, twist is pretty fun. This is going to add some composition to your work. Um, a little harder to use if you're not on like a separate layer. So when you save, you can kind of play with the merging layers feature of this. Uh, but this one is to add some composition to your work. So let's say I want my work to kind of flow this way, but I wanted to do so in a way that was natural um, without taking anything. Well, I can add these little twists and create some natural cosmic feel to my sky. And I can even take my eraser and back out of the parts of this that, you know, I, I think I probably came off a little too hard there. Let's lower the opacity. And I can blend this in. Or you can even take this, really. I, I prefer using the eraser more, but this brush works just as well. Uh, it does have some smudge to it, so I suppose that's the point. So we're going to use warp. This one is really fun. You can take this to any part of your picture. Let's say I want to add a little warp in the trees. Let's actually just back out of this. I wanted to use it down here on the trees. And I'm going to add this here and it adds like a warp-like effect, almost like warp drive. Sometimes you'll see little parts of some cool illustrations of the sky that just look like they're taking off somewhere. And you can really tap around with this and make it come through the the foreground there. Let's let that do its thing. And now we're going to take this and and back out. You might need to get pretty detailed with that one. Well, maybe it's the combination of these two small color chaoses here. If I lower my opacity, there we go. There we go. We got a cool effect going on there. Uh, that one, I probably you probably need some stuff up here and and again to play around with different uh, foregrounds. This one kind of looks a little bit like warp, so it's kind of a bad foreground to use for an example. Then we're going to go to Wave. And Wave is pretty fun because if you go through the things you've already done, you can make them feel like they're kind of 
waving in and out of the cosmos. So there it is, guys. That's the Starry Night brush pack in Particle Shop, a plugin in Photoshop that I absolutely love using. I'm really excited to see what you guys make with these brushes, and thank you guys so much for watching me go through each and every one of these brushes. Thank you.